This is a Philips MFB 541 speaker, and uh, there's probably about five people out there who are going, Oh my god, how did you get your hand on that one? And the rest of you kind of don't understand what would be particularly interesting about this speaker whatsoever. To sum it up, this is a little speaker. It's an active speaker made in 1977 or thereabout with a 7-inch uh, woofer and some little Philips Dome tweeter. Amplifier around the back and nothing really spectacular showing on the outside. Until you get the grill off and have a little squeeze of woofer. We can see that rather than just having two wires, it's actually got four wires connecting it to the system. And that's because this speaker has an accelerometer mounted in the actual woofer, which is feeding into the feedback network of the amplifier. And that means that this little speaker with an acoustic volume of 4 litres, uh, about half the inside of it is space for the amplifier, uh, is able to perform down to 35 hertz with uh, very impressive distortion figures. Uh, I haven't been able to find any official specifications for it, but uh, the few measurements I've taken thus far on it have been very, very impressive indeed. Since I'm measuring indoors, I haven't been able to take any far-field measurements, but by placing a microphone right at the woofer, and driving it uh, a bit uh, until the microphone is clipping. Uh, I've had this thing play a 35Hz sine wave at 0.2% THD, which is just insane. You wouldn't expect a, a speaker like this to be able to repro reproduce such a tone with any decent amount of distortion at any volume. You would basically expect it to just be pure distortion, no matter what you do. And I've also done a rudimentary frequency response measurement, and indeed this thing does have usable response down to 24 hertz. It will, that is, it's 10 dB minus, 10 dB drop off point is 24 hertz, it's 3 dB, it's about 35 hertz as specified. And uh, frankly, I, I don't think you could say that you've ever. I don't think that I've ever seen a speaker which uh, would apply better to the term saying bigger than it is than this one. And I do have its pair sitting over there. Anyway, I want to do a tear down on this and see a bit of how it works. I've always had a bit of a hard-on for these Philips MFB speakers because they have very many rather unique uh, concepts built into them. Uh, not only are they uh, a precursor to the mo modern active monitor, but uh, they have m several really cool features on them. First being, the signal input is done through five pole dents, which I consider to be one of the best audio connectors ever made, and you just have a switch on them to select if it's supposed to be the right of the left channel, because in one of these five pin dent connectors you have left right in ground and left right out so what this means is that you can have one five pin in going to your source hooking into the speaker they can just daisy chain however many of these you wish by using five pin in connectors and you can just select the channel there how easy can you have it it also has the ability to be run off of a power amplifier. It, it has a 19 volt input and I believe uh, Philips actually sold a rather unique 19 volt preamp for this. And that means that you can have very high signal levels in this 5 pin DIN in order to d decrease the noise you pick up along the line since it isn't a balanced circuit. They also support an automatic uh, power on feature and after about a minute with no signal, this will tick, uh, tick a relay and go into standby mode while consuming the 3 watts of power, which uh, 
for the 1970s is just insane. Th th that's uh, almost okay by modern standards for something like this, and the only thing that uses uh, dissipates any power in standby is probably the power transformer, since I date they used a smaller one for that. This has to be a quite good quality power transformer too, in order to get down to such a low uh, power level at standby. I don't know what the tropicalized thing means though. I love the sound of a screw that's never been taken out before. And we should just swing out. Ta da! And there's the magic MFB amplifier with quite a lot of wires going into his PK cabinet. And when you get to the plot like this, you can really see just how tiny the acoustic chamber of this speaker is. I mean, you got that much, which is just space for the amplifier. And uh, this one uh, had a bit of a humming noise issue. Both of them actually do play. And I think we've found the root cause of that. Mm. Good thing I took it apart. Is it these uh, power transistors seem to be some rather unique TO3 Darlingtons, which are probably a pain if they fail, but these don't seem to have any tendency to, at least as long as I replace that cap. And we certainly have 40 genuine years of dust gathered in here. I had a squeeze out the instruction manual for, or rather the repair manual for this, and I think this potentiometer is what regulates the amount of negative feedback the speaker takes from the accelerometer. So I'm probably going to have to have a play around with this when I serve it up to make sure that it's still performing in spec. It's a really neat little amplifier though. All through hell of course, but all the p components are standing on their edges. Really tall mounts. Oh, here, there's another potentiometer. It's supposed to have one for the negative feedback and one for the amplifier bias, of course. Being a traditional class AB amplifier, it's of course going to need to have a bias adjustment. Here's the power on relay and there's not much too much else to know to paint with. It's entirely discrete construction. It's going to use entirely European components since it's, it's 70s Philips. And basically all of these caps are going to be gone because these... I don't think I've ever seen one measure in spec after it's been over 20 years old or so. I actually replaced a few of these in a battery charger from 2004 the other day. They were all bad. So this thing certainly needs a recap. Yeah, pretty crusty. I've got to. This is some impressive dust. There we go. All better. But wow. Is that a bad cap or what? That has to be one of the most graphic failures I've seen in a long time. But, much to my surprise, it's actually still got about 4,000 microfarads left at 40 milliohms, compared to the uh, 7,600 or so in its uh, friend at 10 milliohms. So, while this cap has lost about half of its capacitance, it, it, it's still a cap. Like, this is a usable cap, it isn't entirely ruined, which is most surprising. Of the most interesting part in this speaker is, of course, the woof of those, so let's take it out and see what secrets lies beyond. Alright, here we go. the magic connection 
be on that it really just looks like a normal with it, doesn't it? Something really odd about these speeches is that the front baffle is actually made out of plastic, which they probably gotten away with due to the feedback res feedback sensor in the woofer since you can have quite a lot of you know issues around here. If you can detect that through an accelerometer mounted there, then you're just going to be able to basically compensate them away. Although I have noticed that uh, when playing loudly this part of a cabinet does have a tendency to flex way more than I would really be comfortable with. I was actually curious to find out if there was a brace here which had come loose and indeed I might even consider adding just a cross brace going through the cabinet in order to lessen the amount of flexing going on here since I don't know, it might even wear the plastic down with time and I wouldn't want that. We definitely do not want this plastic cracking. And there's of course no magic going on as far as the tweeter is concerned, it's just running on a standard passive filter and it seems to be a really really common Philips AD0161 slash T8 tweeter. I've never been a huge fan of these but they do the job. Hmm. If we have a look at the schematic for the speaker, those two big blue caps in it are actually rather deceptive. Because this is the power supply section and uh, it it has no negative rail. We only have one capacitor filtering the power rail for the power amplifier. And that's the one that's failed. But if we go up in the schematic over here, we find the other one is just a coupling cap for the woofer. So, that's a bit unexpected. I was taking for granted that it was a double supply power amplifier, as I would expect from the two 8 bit transistors, but that's clearly not the case. Anyway, here's the circuit for the feedback, this is the woofer here which is built into a big block with a PS piezoelectric transducer here and some uh, undefined coupling circuitry and a fat transistor feeding into what's probably just a rather high gain inverting amplifier there and it goes all the way over here rise back into the input of the amplifier. <laughs> so it's quite literally just negative feedback. Literal negative feedback feeding from the woofer into the input of the amplifier, just like you would do negative input negative feedback across the entire amplifier. Which we seem to have going here. Hmm. Weird. It has just a slightly more detailed look at the amplifier module. Really cute old European transistors with a text on top, I do love them. We have the input board hiding underneath there with some rather chunky power resistors for providing some loading if you're driving this thing from a power amplifier on the 19 volt setting. I do like the look of this power transformer. Really shiny, nice copper. This thing must be rather oversized since it's sitting in a rather confined environment. It should be running quite hot, it has every right to. But if it is, it isn't showing any signs of it. Well, those two weird integrated amplifier module kind of transistors. They supposedly have a few resistors and things died inside them as well as a Darlington pair. So I do not wish to blow these up and given the state of that <laughs> capacitor, I'm quite happy that didn't happen. 
and that is the power rectify cap. This is the eight put cap for the woofer, and they're not the same value. This one's a dual. 1650 microfarad, this one's a dual 3400 microfarad. So, I'm going to replace this one right away at least, but I think I'm going to have to order something for this. But I should be able to actually fix this thing up with off the shelf components, although it's going to be somewhat ugly since I don't stock actual lead capacitors. And uh, that'll be it for this little mini teardown of this Philips. MFB 541 motional feedback loudspeaker. I'll probably even get around to actually making a proper repair video on this and I definitely want to do some measurements on it once I get these uh, uh, restored and uh, back into proper operation. So, with a bit of luck you'll have to stay tuned if you're interested. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.